Taryn here with another elegant upgrade. Actually, this one, who are we kidding? Not so elegant. However, it's for my three-year-old son who is in love, in love with Captain America. So less elegant, but super cool. And one of the easiest, easiest finishes you can possibly do. So fast, so easy, and I made my kid happy. So um, you can do this Obviously, you pick the most simplistic design of the characters, and then you can do something great with it. Sorry about the noise. Okay, so here's where the fun gets. So this is all tape work around here, which you guys know how I feel about tape, but for this, I made an exception, because it looks cool. And this is the grand, let me get you up close. So these are coloring book sheets. And when I was originally doing it, I had planned on, if you guys have seen my Alice in Wonderland tabletop, um, I had planned on watercoloring these in, but I actually love the way that it looks in the black and white. I feel like it's more comic booky. So I think I'm gonna leave it black and white because I just really like the way that it looks against the, you know, harsh red and blue. And then I just think it's so fun to open it up and see that. So if you guys wanna see how to get this look, keep on watching. So here's what we're working with. Um, it wasn't in the worst shape I've seen, also not in the best shape. So it just has a lot of paint on it. I'm guessing the black paint is spray paint and the white paint underneath is latex. So we're gonna get rid of all that. But to begin, we're gonna take off all the hardware hinges everything so that I can get it all apart and do everything a little more easily because stripping a piece is much easier on a horizontal surface so as many of the parts of it I can that's what I'm going to do and then I came upon this drawer which was out of control I'm not even sure how they did it but they put the bottom board in on the other side of a blue block glue block and I mean it was just I, I can't even tell you how, it must have been difficult to do that. So anyways, I had to pull that out, put it back in the correct way and kind of fix up the dovetail because it was just a mess. Um, and then I'm taking my Jasco. This is the 15 minute version. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I have never had an easier time stripping a piece. I was expecting this to take just days and it I I don't know if it was the combination of the paint I did everything the exact same way as I always do I don't know but it was just it was a lovely experience stripping something and I've never said that about stripping anything I, it always comes out in like a gooey mess but this was just awesome just awesome Okay, so what I'm doing here is putting a little bit of stripper in the lid and I have these little brushes. I literally get them from the dollar store because it's cheap and I'm going to destroy them anyways. This is one of the nylon ones and you just dip it in the stripper and rub it across and it gets everything out. It's just great for details. And then of course I'm using mineral spirits to clean up all the remaining gunk that's on there. And then we can sand. So as far as the drawers and everything, I know I'm just giving it a scuff sand and smoothing out anything that's left over from the stripping process. So this doesn't have to be too crazy. Some of the paint is set within the grain, so I'm not worried about it coming out because I'm going to paint the drawers and it doesn't have to be perfect. However, the front doors here and then also the top, I did a good job sanding and went all the way I used two grits just for this because it wasn't, I had already stripped it. So I went from 120 to 220 and that's the only two levels of sandpaper that I used. And then I'm staining the doors as well as the top. And since I don't have an exact color that I want, I'm using a more red toned, I believe this is called early American. And I'm putting that on and it's too red for what I want but it's the lighter of the two colors so i put that on first so the wood absorbs most of that 
and then I'm gonna go in with dark walnut over the top because dark walnut is too dark but has the cooler tone that I'm looking for and go over and they just kind of mix together now you don't want to do the dark walnut first because the wood will absorb too much and then you won't be able to see the early American over the top so again you start with your lighter color first and then you can go over with your darker color because then it won't absorb because it's already absorbed the first color you put down I really hope that made sense the way that I just said it to you so anyways that's what I did to the front doors and also the top of the piece and then I went ahead and sealed them with poly and then I'm taking my blue color this is um, deep water blue from Chalk Mountain and it's just a simple paint job this is seriously the easiest easiest piece ever I mean everything has just been this is I mean it would be a good beginner piece and I feel like it has a lot of a lot of bang for its buck kind of thing you know you're just you're getting a lot out of it so a simple coat of paint I did two coats over the entire piece with the exception of the doors and the top obviously and I do sand between my coats just so that it's a smoother finish and my shop is very warm there's no air in there so I use quite a bit of water if it starts sticking at all because I want a smooth finish on this I just spritz a little water on there and make sure that my brush is going smooth that way I can do long strokes from left to right and then the hardware is just getting a quick coat of black spray paint nothing big and oh my gosh you guys this is the greatest thing ever so I've had this sitting in my stash for a while because I wanted to use it it is the orange scented hemp oil from Chalk Mountain and it's just been sitting there and I haven't used it I don't know why but this took me seconds to seal like each side which it just went on so smooth you don't have to work it in like wax is a little more labor intensive i would say this goes on smooth like poly <laughs> but you can then touch it afterward and not be worried about things getting into it oh my gosh i'm going to be using this so much more because it was just so easy to use it does have a more matte sheen if you're if you want something a little shinier it's it wouldn't be my go-to but it, it's oh man it was just so easy using that I can't wait to use it again because I it was a dream just so easy and I just used one of their little applicator sponges so I'm putting the doors back on now because as you can see there's a little blue circle in the middle I was going to try and do the shield on the front of this while they were laying down and then I realized uh, oh, this is an old piece and sometimes things don't sit exactly perfect and I didn't want it to be off like a couple millimeters and have it not be a perfect circle when I attach the doors so I put the doors back on and then I will do the circle in the center because you just can't trust old furniture This is Barn Red, also from Chalk Mountain, and I'm doing this on the inside of the doors and also on the drawer sides. So again, super easy. It's just two coats of this and it's done. That way it's just a fun pop of color when you open the doors, so it's not so plain. And it has the original wood tone in there, which is kind of, you know, that icky old orangey color that nobody wants anymore. So coat of red here, and again, I put some on the drawer sides, which I didn't film because it's just red paint and I'm not doing anything fancy. So here's a fun trick for those of you who have little ones that like to help. Uh, so he leaves kind of a big mess of paint there. All I do is let him do it for a bit, get my spray bottle out, and then I can go back over it with long brush strokes and fix what he's done and then let him go back at it and then do the same thing again. So, so long as I have my spray bottle there, I can let him have his fun and then spray it down, take the brush and make the long brush strokes again to clean it up. So fun little tip for those of you with small children running around that like to help okay I printed out a star on my computer 
cut it out and then I drew it with pencil on the piece. So that's what you see me doing here. I'm just filling in the blue around it. Again, I had that little blue circle there because I had originally planned on doing this on the ground where I had a flat surface, but I wanted to make sure that the doors would line up exactly the way that they would be on the piece. So started started over. So I have the blue, I'm going around that. The white is super opaque once it's finished so you can't see it over the top and it's just easier to kind of go over the top of it. And I'm not worried about layering colors. This stuff is super pigmented and it dries really fast so it just doesn't take long to be able to do a layer and then if you have to go over any sections going back and forth, you can just do that and it's not a big deal. You would think I would get a circle of some kind to try and make this perfect. I didn't. This is fully eyeballed. <laughs> the only thing that I drew out was the star. I feel like I tried doing circles, like mapping them out, and it just, I wasn't happy with it. So I'm just pretending like I know what I'm doing as per usual. I do have a picture of the shield that I can just look at to kind of make sure I'm on the right track. And I also have um, a coloring book, which we're going to be using later, but it also has pictures of the shield on it and things to kind of keep me inspired making this piece. This is completely out of my comfort zone. Uh, clearly not anything like my style at all, but Lucas is cute and I love him, so he gets what he wants. So this is the color coloring book I'll be using. It's from the dollar store. I'm just giving the shield a quick sand because this is the first coat and I'm going to go over it again with another coat just to make sure I clean up any lines and anything that's kind of going over where I don't want it and so it's a smooth finish. And then I just took a little bit of light gray and did the little detailed etching in the around the edges of the star. So I didn't want to do that on the first coat because it would have just been sanded off because it's such a light and really fine line on there, but it's kind of necessary for the shield. <laughs> so it went on the second coat. And then you guys, I didn't film this because I really had no idea what I'm doing. You guys know that I hate tape, but I literally just started putting it on there and I would match it up from one side to the next in any design. There was no rhyme or reason to this. I just kind of started and ended up where I ended up. But literally all you have to do is put tape down, make sure that it's really, really down so that you don't have any paint seeping underneath as you're going. And that's all that I did. And then I'm painting obviously in all of the blank spots. The same color blue as the entire rest of the piece. And just trying to be really careful around the shield but again if i get over any lines or anything i can just go right back over with the red it's not a huge deal so we'll get out rid of the next part it's all painted blue now and this is like ugh, the most gratifying part ever i love love seeing the wood grain through the paint and i've seen other people do this and i just i think it's so cool again not my style so i probably won't <laughs> be doing a lot of it but it was perfect for this piece so here I'm just cleaning off the fronts of the inner drawers and figuring out where I'm putting my coloring book sheets and decoupaging them on you guys have seen me do this a ton of times um, so I can link some other videos or you can just watch my other one there's like a actual decoupage playlist you can watch but so I just get them on there to where there's somewhere that I like them to be they don't look too crazy on there because you know you're kind of making a collage and you don't want it to be overly structured or overly crazy just you know somewhere in the middle and I have all the drawers put together and so I slice the paper with all the drawers like that that way when I put them back into the dresser it looks you know cohesive And then 
after you remove the tape, there's kind of a lip there. So I did go back over with my sanding sponge and just kind of smoothed it out a little bit to make sure that it wasn't too crazy. This is again, two coats of paint. So two coats of paint next to some tape obviously gives a little bit of lift there. So just sand it down a little. And then of course I'm sealing with the hemp oil. Oh man, so fast, so easy. And then you just go back after a couple minutes and wipe off the excess. And then you can wait overnight and go back and just kind of buff it if you if you want to. So we're adding the hardware back on. Then of course I had to add in an extra hole because I changed up the hardware for these and put longer pulls instead of the little knobs on. And this next scene is Lucas actually seeing it. And of course he peeked in before I could get his reaction on there because he's a stinker and wouldn't just stay outside the door but here it is. Come on, you want to come see it? Yeah, what is it? It's your new big boy dresser. Does that have Captain Mary on it? It does. Good. Oh, why don't you need to put my, my shield on? Just I thought it would be fun. Do you want to look at it? No, I'm going to open it. Oh, this one's Dana broke Captain Marshall apart. Uh-huh. Are these, are these the doors? They are. Is that so cool? Ooh. I need my, my I need my mask on too. Need your mask on too? Yeah. So but so that it looks different. This is when it was round. This is when it was round. This is when it was apart. Do you like it? Yep. So here's the finished result. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. Thank you so much for watching, subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing, all that stuff. I truly appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. And uh, I'll see you guys next week.